Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Christian and you are watching A Dev Story. So lately I've been talking a little bit about different computer science fundamental topics that are very useful as a software developer but also useful for a technical interview. And today I'll be covering a bit on one of the core concepts that is sometimes very hard to, to get, that is concurrency. Today I'll be talking a little bit about concurrency, parallelism, what is the difference between those concepts, and also about uh, process, uh, threads, what do they mean, what, uh, when should you have, uh, how many threads should you have in your application, and these kind of things. So without further ado, let's start. First thing is concurrency and parallelism. They sound kind of similar, but they are not. Concurrency basically means that you execute things that are overlapping in time. So you could have uh, two, three, any number of uh, things executing, and they are, seem to be executing at the same time, but not necessarily they are happening in parallel. So in order to do parallelism, then you have uh, you can execute multiple processes or uh, have multiple threads, right? And if you have a multi-core uh, system hardware, then they could execute literally at the same time. So what is a process and what is a thread? Basically, there are many resources that, on the internet that define them very well, and there are also books, etc. But uh, here, I will, I will give you a very quick summary. Basically, both are independent flows of execution in a, in, the, in a program, let's say. But a process is at the program level, and a thread is inside a process. Right? So you can have uh, multiple processes, and each of the processes have multiple threads. All threads of a process share the, memory, the same memory space. So if you have different processes, they will have their own memory space. But if you have a thread, like all the threads inside the process will share the same memory space. And that has some connotations when you are attacking concurrency. When programming using multiple threads, then it's called multi-threading programming. Multi-threading programming can be very useful for your program because it will allow you to execute things in parallel and sometimes improve the efficiency or the execution time of your program. It's very tricky sometimes to know how many threads you should use and it will depend a lot on your use case, on the programming language that you're using, on the operating system, the machine that you're, the, the hardware that you're using basically. If you really, really want to have an optimized, the most optimized version, you need to do benchmarking and check what is improving or not the performance of your application. But in general, there are different rules that allow you to more or less have an idea uh, at least how to discuss the performance of your program if you want to do concurrency or if you want to implement multi-thread uh, solution. A uh, traditional rule of thumb is to have as many threads as, as cores have your hardware machine, right? And this is uh, a rule of thumb, but it's, it's not always the, 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 the way to go, let's say. Because you can have things, for example, that execute always sequentially, right? So if you, even if you have four cores or eight cores, so I don't know how many cores, you will need still to execute things sequentially. So you are not going to do better having four or eight threads versus having only one. There are also other cases where you're doing a lot of calculations that can be run in parallel, in, in which case you cannot do more calculations that the CPU allows you at the same time. So if you have four cores, then you will have probably four threads executing calculations on all of them. But also if you have I.O. or input output uh, operations, during those times, the CPU is going to be idle. So it doesn't matter if you only have four threads and uh, the four of them are doing I.O. like waiting for the disk or doing a request to the database or resolving a request from a user on the web server, then the CPU is going to be idle in those cases. So in, in that case, it might be useful to have more uh, threads than the CPU cores because you will be able to, to always have a thread that is executing something. If you have too few or too many threads, your application can run significantly slower. So it's very important to have this kind of reflection when you are thinking about doing things concurrently or parallel. And this is something very important to have when you're discussing with your teammates, uh, when you're implementing a new solution and you want to to find uh, what is going to be the best way to optimize your server, for example, or your application. It's good to have these kind of discussions, but of course it's also very important during technical interviews if you need to you know, think about these topics, right? Like uh, why you're taking one decision versus another, what is going to be the performance impact of doing something versus another in terms of concurrency. So that's it for today about talking about concurrency and parallelism. Uh, of course, if you want to know more, follow the other videos as well. Like I will be publishing soon a video regarding logs and other concurrency topics. 
And of course, if you ha if you want me to talk a little bit more in, in depth into any of these topics, just don't forget to 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 comment below. And uh, if you liked it, click the like button. If you want to share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel, just uh, please do. And thank you again for watching. See you next time.